welcome to my latest YouTube video. This is a complete room tour to end 2021. I am your host, my name is Mo Hussein. Some of you may already know me as Gizmo from Instagram. Please, if you have a minute, do check out my account. It's called at Gizmogram. I post anything and everything tech and gaming related. It's been approximately nine months since my last video and this is my third YouTube video. In this video, I'm going to try and cover as much of my room and things that make up my setup as possible. Now, as you'll see, I've got a ton of stuff in my room. If you have any questions or you feel that I haven't covered anything, by all means, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to come back to you. Now, as I've said, this is my third YouTube video. In fact, the whole process of making videos, it's still a process that's new to me. I'm not really used to this. I'd appreciate your support. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. This video is quite long. I've tried to make it as detailed as possible. So sit back, grab a drink, and I hope you enjoy it. So before we go any further, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how small my space is. Now, if you look at these wide angle shots, you can just see how tiny the room is. So I've put the measurements on the screen, but this is the smallest room in my house. It's referred to as the box room. However, Given the space that I have to play with, I think I've done a pretty good job. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So let's begin. And we're gonna start with the main setup, the desk setup area. I'm gonna take you through each of the items that make up this space. And I'll try and give you more information about, you know, its sizes and its forms and functions. So let's start with the worktop. Now I've put some of the vital information like sizes on screen. This worktop is from Ikea. It's called the Ekbecken. And in fact, it's a kitchen worktop. It's a solid, it's really heavy duty. It's wood laminate. And unlike the Ikea Linman, which a lot of people use, this thing is mega heavy duty. In fact, the worktop alone weighs approximately 22 kilograms. For anyone who may have seen my very first YouTube video where I showed my tiny gaming room, you'll note that I no longer use the two Alex drawers as my desk base. I've switched it for a electronic standing desk and the frame that makes up the desk, which the workshop sits on, is from a company called FlexiSpot. The model that I have is the EB2, this, this thing is great. It's got dual motors, one on each leg, which makes it really smooth and really strong. It has an approximately 100 kilogram load capacity. It comes with this really nice controller, which, uh, which has three memory settings. I basically have one setting for my standing position, which I showed in the video earlier, and one for my sitting position. I don't really use the third setting. Here's a quick glimpse of the underside of my desk. You can see a lot of cables trunking. Would you like to see how I manage my cables and let me know and maybe I'll make another video. So I've gone from having two Alex drawers to just having the one IKEA Alex drawers. Now these things are everywhere. Anyone and everyone who has a desk set up has an Alex drawers. And for good reasons, they are fantastic. So let's talk about monitors. I currently have a triple screen setup. My main monitor is an LG Ultrawide. It's a 34 inch curved screen and it is absolutely fantastic. In fact, it's probably my best purchase in the whole setup. I've had it for two years now and it's been solid since. Just look at that curve. It looks absolutely stunning. Now, ultrawides are fantastic for working, especially if, like me, 
you tend to have multiple windows open at the same time it really is great this this particular one has amazing features like picture in picture so you can have two different inputs say a hdmi and a display port and have them side by side he also has speakers built in granted they're not fantastic but if you're looking to minimize and not have external speakers then you can probably get away with just the built-in speakers now in terms of the desk arm i actually clamp all my monitors to my desk the clamps that i use they're from a company called bontech and i purchased them from amazon right so moving on to the next monitor it's the 27 inch again another lg it's the 27 gn 950 now this is the one that i have vertically on the left this screen is insane it's a 4k 144 hertz screen it's a gaming monitor and if you plug it into a next gen console like the xbox series x oh my god the actual quality and experience is insane the built-in rgb ring light at the back is absolutely insane now you can hook this up with a usb cable run a piece of lg software called lg sphere lighting then if you're playing a game for example the software will mimic the colors on the screen and match them against the ring light to give you this brand new you know, and more immersive experience let's move on to my third monitor now i get a ton of questions about this particular screen on my instagram post a lot of people think it's either a tablet or an ipad however it's none of these things it's a portable usb type c powered monitor from a company called vistles and yes you can if you so wish draw on it as i'm doing now what do you think of my artistic ability let me know in the comments now this thing is it's really light it's portable as i've said it's powered by usb type c now if you're connecting it to your pc graphic card directly by type c then that's all you need however if you are connecting a device through hdmi and this uses mini hdmi then you will as well as the hdmi need to provide another source of power through the type c uh, port as well now when i first got this screen to be honest i didn't have you know high expectations of what it would do i thought it's going to be quite sluggish and the touchscreen wasn't going to be very responsive however i'm actually pleasantly surprised it's it's really bright the touchscreen function it's it's really snappy and quick the menus are really easy to use it's a 1080p 60 hertz ips panel and yes you can also game on it here i am giving you a quick uh, demo of candy crush obviously the type of games you can play you, you know with your finger you're going to be limited but the basic games candy crush things like fruit ninja and things like that it's actually quite fun overall i'm really happy with this screen and if like me you want a triple screen setup but you lack the space then why not consider getting one of these small portable touch screens so moving on to the next item we have the minimalist design mouse pad now i'm not sure why they call it a mouse pad it's look at the size of this thing it should really be called a desk mat what do you think mouse pad or a desk mat let me know in the comments anyway so this particular one is from a company called delta hub it's supposed to be minimalist and it's made of this felt material it's really good you know mouse whatever you put on it glides on it really nice and smoothly so a quick question what do you prefer a minimalist looking mouse pad or one of those really brightly colored ones let me know in the comments moving on to the keyboard my current daily keyboard is the keychron k8 this is a tkl mechanical keyboard i've gone for the brown switches which are absolutely amazing to type with now i did a youtube video on this keyboard it was a you know a short unboxing and uh, a video just talking about the keyboard's main features and so forth so if you have a minute please do check that video out 
Now, I own about seven or eight different keyboards. However, the reason why the K8 is my daily driver, so to speak, is because for working purposes, this is still my favorite, especially with the brown switches. It really is lovely to type on. Now, if like me, you like RGB lighting, then trust me, you won't be disappointed with the K8. It's got 15 plus type of RGB backlight. So what's your favorite keyboard or what's your daily driver? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on to the mouse, my everyday work mouse is the MX Master 3 from Logitech. And just look at this thing. The first time I saw the MX3, I was kind of taken back by its design. I mean, look at it, it's really striking. The MX3 has something called mag speed electronic scrolling, and this thing is insane. Honestly, it's so quick. The MX3 has built in batteries which you charge via USB C. Now you can connect to it by the uh, provided USB dongle or you can uh, pair it with up to three Bluetooth devices. The next item is basically a ergonomic wrist support. Now it's from the same company that the desk pad is from which is Delta Hub and this is a small little gadget. It's a, it's a silicon molded pad which you rest your wrist on when using the mouse. If like me, you're on your PC on a daily basis for long periods, and honestly, you should really invest in something like the Carpio. It really does work and it will, if not stop, reduce injuries to your wrist. It may take a little time to get used to it, but once you start using it, it's one of those things that just becomes, you know, second nature. So when I'm playing games on my setup, I tend to use a wired mouse. And the wired mouse that I use is the Razer Mamba Elite. You know, I was going to say Black Mamba. For some reason, whenever I think of the Razer Mamba, I'm thinking of the Black Mamba Snake. I'm a massive Razer fan. In fact, I bought the Mamba Elite approximately two years ago and it works just as good now as it did then. Now there probably are more newer mouses, more advanced mouses, but to be honest, this one serves its purpose. Not only is it good at playing games, but it's, it's a great everyday mouse as well. Quick question, when gaming, do you prefer a wired mouse or a wireless mouse? Let me know in the comments below. The next item in the setup is the Stream Deck from a company called Elgato. Now, as the name suggests, Stream Deck is essentially aimed at streamers. Now, I'm not a streamer, and like many other things in my setup, I don't really use this device you know, to its full potential. The Stream Deck basically was created to assist streamers to make you know their life easier to make shortcuts to a lot of things that they would commonly have to press a lot of keys to do. At the moment, I just use it as a shortcut tool to launch various websites and applications and to control system functions like volume and so forth. But you can also control smart lighting, you know, for example, the color lights, the nano leaves. You can control all of that from this device as well. The next item is a wireless Razer QI enabled charger. Now this item actually was a gift for when I reached 10,000 followers on Instagram. Now I've got tons of chargers, many wireless, but the reason why I keep this around is because of the amazing Razer Chroma RGB lighting. Now this is a 10 watt fast charger, however, to get the full benefit, you need to be using a compatible power adapter that supports that. Otherwise, if you were to just plug it into your PC, you wouldn't really get its full benefit. Your phone will charge, but it will only trickle charge. The next item in the setup, it's the BenQ monitor light. Now, I believe this is their third iteration. 
Now, at the time of this video, I'm not entirely sure if this item has been released. What I have here is a pre-release version. This is called the Halo, and this one comes with a wireless controller. The first version had the controls built onto the actual lamp. The second version had a control dial, which was connected to the USB cable. And this version, they've gone full wireless. Now, the reason why this is called the Halo is because this one, unlike the first two iterations, has an additional light. And the additional light is at the rear of the device, hence the Halo. And believe me, it actually makes a massive difference. Now, I didn't have any issues with the first two models to fit my curved screens. But if anyone did have any issues, the Halo has a special attachment just for curved screens. Now, I don't know the official release date of this item, but uh, from what I understand, it's due to be released in Europe sometime towards the end of this year. I can tell you from experience, if you're in the market for a light bar or if you're looking for a way to improve the lighting in your desk, this item you should definitely have on your list. Now I've used the version one and version two and this one by far is, it is the best. In the video, it may look like the light is actually reflecting on the screen, but I can tell you when you're looking at it from front of the screen, there's no reflection and there's no glare. Now I want to talk to you about one of my favorite brands. It's a company called Grovemade. Grovemade are the people that made this walnut shelf. Now Grovemade products are not cheap, but believe me, they are absolutely beautiful, fantastically well made and they will last you forever. A lot of people on my Instagram, they actually think that my monitor, the ultra wide, is sitting on top of the actual shelf, which of course it's not, but you can actually have a monitor on the shelf. Now, I also have this metal tray, and when I say metal, I mean it's actually metal, and it's got these molded inserts, so if you, know, if you want to store pens or any of your daily essentials, it's got little compartments for that. The brown leather Apple watch strap and the card holder, by the way, are from another one of my favorite companies called Nomad. Go check them out. Their products are absolutely insane. This oblong shaped wooden tray is made from acacia wood and it's from a company called Dot Grid. Dot Grid make a really nice selection of stationary products from pens and pencils to notebooks and organizers. Go check them out. These earbuds are from a company called Lenshin. They are really nice actually. They're small, they fit into your ear really nicely. They're comfortable and they charge wirelessly as well. This is my Apple AirTag. Um, I had it personalized with my name, of course. Any uh, Anybody else have an AirTag? What do you use it for? Another brand that I really, really like is a company called Orbit Key. And this particular item is a key holder, which has a magnetic locking system. This is the Orbit Key key organizer. Now, as well as organizing your key, you can also get different accessories, such as a multi-tool and also a USB memory stick. This is my Apple Watch 6 and currently I've got a titanium metal band from a company called Nomad. Honestly, the quality is absolutely fantastic. Moving on to the speakers. Now the main speakers in my setup are from Edifier. They're the R1380DB bookshelf speakers. These speakers have a really beautiful wooden enclosure. They can be used wired or via Bluetooth. Now it's difficult for me to describe just how good they sound and believe me, they do sound fantastic. And the bass is really, really good as well. 
These speakers also come with a nice little remote control to control the basic functions and change the various inputs. The next speaker is literally out of this world. This is the Mars Pro, and yes, it's a speaker. When a lot of people see this on my Instagram, they're always asking me, what is that tripod looking device? Because, you know, you can't immediately understand that it's a speaker, but believe me when I say, oh my God, this thing sounds absolutely insane. And it looks insane as well. It's made by a company called Gravistar. And of course it's got, you know, different changeable RGB light colors and so forth. Um, and the bass is absolutely fantastic as well. But more than anything, it just looks completely unique and it's really, really eye-catching. As a speaker, it sounds absolutely fantastic. And again, it's difficult for me to emphasize just how good this sounds. You've really got to hear it to believe it. The battery lasts approximately 15 hours. That flashing indicator, by the way, means the battery is low and it's got touch sensitive volume controls on the top as well. Right, the next unique item in my desk setup, it's this amazing clock. This is called the Nixie Tube Clock. Now this is from a company called Inno Gadget Co. and it comes as a self assembly kit. It's, um, it does take some time to put all the pieces together but believe me once you do the result is absolutely amazing I mean just look at this thing it looks very unique very different and again it's really eye-catching again like so many of the other things in my setup this has some beautiful RGB and it's got these buttons underneath it so you can change the various animation colors and set the clock and so forth if you want to see a quick build video of me putting the actual item together head over to my instagram there's a post of me actually assembling it this dust cover by the way it's an additional extra and be very careful it cracks really easily this little small device is obviously an sd card reader it's nothing special to be honest it's from amazon it's got three usb 3.0 ports as well and it reads a standard sd card as well as a mini sd card quick question i currently have a canon dslr in fact i've got two what brand do you use let me know in the comments below now all around my room i've tried to add some plants just to you know change the atmosphere just to make it look a bit nice now i will admit this bamboo plant i've got here actually serves more than just that purpose it's there also to hide the monitor arm which you can see from here it does a really good job of that now obviously these are all artificial plants and most of them are from ikea Next, we have a more newer section of my setup, the Rode Podcasting area. Now, the Rodecaster Pro is the world's most powerful all-in-one solution for podcasting. If you are looking to get into podcasting, I mean, you don't necessarily need to have this device, but if you are looking for a professional quality podcasting device, this will probably be your go-to item. Okay, it's time to pull the tab. Very satisfying. And yes, that my friend is a touch screen. Now this has got some insane features. It's got four XLR microphone inputs. It's got four headphone outputs. It's got this jingle pad over here so you can preload various sounds and make it do things like this. <laughs> that's fantastic isn't it honestly i could talk to you about this thing all day and i wouldn't have scratched the surface 
What do you think? Shall I make another video just for the actual Rodecaster Pro? Let me know in the comments. This is the PSA One Plus Boom Arm from Rode. This has built-in cable management. I've got it clamped to my desk and it just moves so smoothly. I mean, you can move it up and down side to side if you know, minimal effort. I think it's probably one of the best looking boom arms as well. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now for the microphone, I'm using the Rode Procaster. What do you think? I'm actually recording this voiceover using this microphone right now. How do you think it sounds? It looks absolutely fantastic and the build quality is insane. It feels really heavy and solid. Now, I don't currently have a pair of studio quality headphones, so when I'm using the Rode Station, I'm just currently using my Venom gaming headset. Right, so moving on to the wall shelf above the main setup. The shelf itself, it's from IKEA, and I basically use the shelf to display a few of my favorite things, such as this tech art. Now, this the real iPhone 4S which has been dismantled and framed. It's by a company called Grid Studio and it looks absolutely fantastic. And this pair of headphones is by Edifier and again it's one of my favorite Bluetooth headphones. These are very light, they're really comfortable, they have active noise cancellation and also a low latency gaming mode. Now just to add some nice touch, I also have this hanging type IKEA artificial plant. Now talking about iPhones, iPhone 4S is my all time favorite phone. Which is your all time favorite phone? Let me know in the comments below. And yes, I also have RGB on the actual shelf as well. Right, let's move on to my favorite part the RGB lighting in my setup. Now, as you can imagine, I've got tons of lighting all around the room. Behind the ultra wide, I have RGB light strips from Cololite. Behind the actual desk, I have RGB lighting from LifeX. Now, this is the LifeX beam and oh my gosh, this is one of the most insane RGB lights ever. The LifeX Beam Kit comes as six individual bars and they connect to each other magnetically. You also get a smaller piece which you can use to make a corner angle with. Now the Beam is probably one of the brightest RGB lighting devices that I've seen and also the animations and colours that you can actually produce is absolutely insane. Now I've got RGB all around the room but honestly if I had to pick one item, one light to keep, I'd keep the Beam because this thing can light up the entire room. Just check out the glow underneath the desk. It's insane. Now in my floor lamp, I have a LifeX color changing light bulb. And again, these are all Alexa enabled and I use Alexa in the house. So I change the colors with voice command. And on my ceiling light, again, I have a LifeX color changing light bulb as well. And again, it's controlled mostly using my voice through Alexa. And when you have the floor lamp and the ceiling light on simultaneously, you can actually create some weird and wonderful effects. Now we're not finished quite yet. Under the desk, I have Govi RGBIC strip lights. Fortunately, the Govi ones are the only lights that I cannot control via Alexa, but all the other ones I can. On the wall, I have Nanoleaf light panels. Now these are absolutely amazing, in fact they are really really popular, you've probably seen them in everyone's setup on Instagram, on, you know, lots of YouTubers use these as well. The version that I have also comes with what's called a rhythm kit and basically what it does is it makes the 
light panels dance to the music. It's like having an indoor disco. And here's my room with all the RGB in its full glory. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Are you a fan of RGB? Do you love RGB? Do you hate RGB? Let me know either way. Right, so when playtime is over, this is what my work setup looks like. Now, I work from home currently four days a week and I go into the office one day a week. And when I'm working from home, this is typically what my desk looks like. And yes, that big ugly phone is my work phone. In fact, I was forced to bring it home because I work four days a week. It's a work issued IP phone. This is my work issued corporate laptop. It's a HP ProBook 430 G7. Now when I'm working, I tend to use only the ultra wide and that's connected to my work laptop via USB type C, which delivers both power and data. Then I simply switch the Bluetooth on the keyboard and the mouse to the corresponding channels that are predefined for the laptop. Right, so when you spend as much time as I do in front of a PC, you need something comfortable to sit on. What better chair than the Razer Isker? This is a gaming chair, I'll admit. However, it's just as good as a office chair. I've had this chair for over a year now and it looks and feels still like brand new. Honestly, Razer built this thing like a tank. It is really solid. Since having this chair, I've had about four other chairs, you know, to do reviews and tests and so forth. If I had to pick a chair, I would still pick the Razer Iska. Show me another chair that beats the Iska, then I may reconsider. Razer built this chair with a lot of ergonomic in mind and so forth. It's really comfortable, as I said, and this chair has this unique lumbar support. Watch this. Just like magic. Now, I know a lot of people have this love-hate relationship for Razer, but what's your favorite chair? What brand is your favorite chair? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so now let's talk about the side of the room that people rarely ever see. It's the right-hand side where the actual PC case is stored. So on the shelves, I store my PC case, box files, product boxes, um, there's my home NVR CCTV system, some of my favourite books, so these are the Harry Potter books, first editions, I wish. <laughs> um, I've also got various other assorted books underneath, there's some of my favourite Xbox controllers which I'll talk about, um, product boxes as I mentioned, and yes, I've got another plant there still. There's another unit within the actual shelves where the actual PC case is. And yes, if you look on that corner, I also have a Synology NAS with eight terabytes of storage, which currently I'm not even using. And yes, those are Razer keycaps within glass bottles. Don't ask me why. So my PC case is a Thermaltec A500. Oh, and oh my gosh, it weighs an absolute ton lovely case it's really big i know but it is it looks absolutely beautiful and it has glass panels on both sides now i built this pc approximately two years ago it's based on the amd ryzen threadripper 1920 it's a 12 core cpu and i have a rtx 2070 graphic card and yes, most of the components inside have RGB, as you can see from these images. So my plan is to actually build a new PC because unfortunately Microsoft do not support my processor in Windows 11. So the area above the PC case is where I store some of my favorite Xbox controllers. I want to just briefly talk to you about each one. So the one on the wooden a walnut stand it's the limited edition halo infinite controller which 
just only recently came out. This is my most expensive controller. I can't believe I spent, I think it was about 170 pounds. Absolutely insane, but just look how beautiful it is. This is a Elite Series 2 controller. Next, we have the limited edition Horizon 5 controller. Again, this thing just looks absolutely beautiful. I love the different colors on it. Are you a Horizon 5 fan? Let me know in the comments. If not Horizon, then what's your favorite racing series? The last controller, this was uh, actually a birthday gift from the missus. This was made from, I believe, the Xbox Design Lab. And it's actually customized with my Instagram name, Kismogram. This walnut custom made stand is from a company called Nova Beam Design and it looks absolutely beautiful. If you want to show off a limited edition controller, this is the way to do it. The artwork behind the controllers, by the way, is an original iPhone 1, a dismantled and framed artwork. Right, so we're coming up almost to the end of the tour. Now, this is the area again that you probably don't ever see. This is the storage area behind the actual desk. These units, they're basically IKEA Billy bookcases with glass doors. As you'll see from this wide angle shot, I basically use it to store all my, you know, tech gadgets and product boxes. Another piece of amazing artwork is this dismantled frame of an original PSP 1000. Now growing up, the PlayStation Portable was one of my favourite consoles. What's your favourite console? Let me know in the comments below. Right folks, so we've come to the end. I know it's been a long video. I appreciate anyone who's you know watched it to the very end. If you have, leave me a comment, I'll give you a thumbs up. Now, I'd love to continue making more of these videos. I need your support. Please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Thank you.